One of the biggest mysteries in the universe is dark matter. So astrophysicists have been observing the universe now for many decades and they tell us that in addition to all the visible matter that we can see around us, there must be some other type of matter out there. So far we've only seen it through gravitational forces. Uh, maybe it has other forces, maybe we can detect it, we don't know, but it's one of the biggest puzzles in our understanding of astrophysics and cosmology is what is this dark matter. So this story of dark matter started back in the 1930s when the Swiss astrophysicist uh, Fritz Zwicky was observing galaxies in a cluster of galaxies called Coma. And he found something very strange. What he discovered was that these galaxies were moving too fast. So, so what do I mean by that? What I mean is that you can calculate from the galaxies that you can see how much gravitational field they generate. And then you can calculate what speed galaxies would have to have in order to stay inside this gravitational field. The same way that, for example, you can calculate the speed of the Earth from knowing that the gravitational field in the solar system is generated by the Sun in the middle. So what he found was that those galaxies in the coma cluster were moving much too fast. Uh, if the only gravitational field was that generated by the visible matter, then they should be flying away from each other, not staying inside the cluster. So he said, there must be some additional invisible form of dark matter there. So that was the 1930s. Now I think for many years, people didn't pay a lot of attention. And uh, probably the person who really convinced astrophysicists and other scientists that this dark matter has to be real uh, was the astronomer Vera Rubin. So she did something a little bit different. What she did was looked at the motions of stars in a galaxy. And she found much the same effect. Like Fritz Wicke, she found that the stars in the galaxies were moving too fast. The gravitational field generated by the stars themselves was not sufficient to keep the stars in orbit around the center of the galaxy. So that was the 1970s. Now, since then, uh, there have been many more pieces of evidence confirming the reality of dark matter. Uh, for example, uh, we can measure the properties of the background radiation that, that fills the universe that was produced when atoms were born 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And using that light from just after the Big Bang, we can figure out what there was in the universe when it was that young age. And so we can tell, obviously, there was radiation, obviously there was the ordinary visible matter that we're made of, but in addition, there had to be this dark matter. And uh, using these observations, we can in some sense weigh the amount of dark matter and we can compare it with the amount of visible matter. And the dark matter is somewhere between five and ten times as much as the visible matter in the universe. So that's why I say that the existence of dark matter is well established and it's you know, one of the biggest puzzles that we have in our understanding of the universe. So the next question is, what is this dark matter made of? So one possibility is that it's made of some sort of minuscule particle uh, like uh, the ones that we see in our particle accelerators, although it would have to have different properties. And the particles that we know about could not explain the dark matter. For one thing, the dark matter particle would not have any electric charge or perhaps a very, very small electric charge. So it's not the same as an electron or a proton. 
uh, it would have to have very weak interactions. So it couldn't be made of neutral elementary particles like neutrons, for example. Uh, it would have to have a relatively large mass. So it couldn't be a neutrino, for example. So it would have to be some additional type of particle, something that we've not met before. And there's all sorts of different ideas about what that dark matter particle might be. And depending on those ideas, people pro propose different ways of actually trying to detect it and pin down exactly what it is. Now, when you're doing these experiments to look for dark matter, you can either look for it directly. So according to the theory, now here we are sitting in this room and there are dark matter particles coming through it all the time. And uh, you think, well, it, if there's dark matter particles coming through all the time, it must be simple to detect them. But not so simple because their interactions must be very, very weak. And if you tried to measure their properties here on the surface of the Earth, you would have enormous backgrounds from things like the cosmic rays that come from outer space. So what people do is they go to uh, deep underground laboratories where they don't get these cosmic rays, they're shielded by the Earth. And uh, there they look for very rare, very weak collisions between these possible dark matter particles and ordinary matter. So there's a lot of experiments that are doing that at the moment, uh, but so far they haven't found any signs of dark matter particles. So what else could you do? Well, if they really are particles, and if they weigh less than, let's say, a thousand times as much as a proton, then collisions of protons at high energy particle accelerators might produce particles of dark matter. And that's been one of the big experimental programs at the CERN Large Hadron Collider. And uh, they've been looking for the production directly of these dark matter particles. Now, you, you don't actually see the dark matter particle itself uh, because it doesn't have electric charge, it doesn't interact in the detector. But after it's been produced, it carries away energy and momentum that you can't detect. So what you do is you draw up a sort of balance sheet of all the energy and momentum coming out of the collision and you look to see whether it balances or not. And if it doesn't, you say, well, maybe that's dark matter. So those are you know, two of the ways that uh, people are currently looking for dark matter particles. Another possibility that people are studying is if you've got these dark matter particles around us in the universe today, every once in a while they may collide with each other and when they collide they might produce particles that we can actually detect, for example amongst the cosmic rays. So uh, that's another thing that uh, astronomers and astrophysicists are doing. They're looking for unexpected particles in the cosmic rays. But again, so far, no luck. So in view of this lack of success so far, people are considering, you know, maybe there are other possibilities for this dark matter. For example, uh, a few years ago, gravitational waves were discovered from the mergers of black holes. So people revived an old suggestion that maybe the dark matter isn't in the form of small particles at all, but instead it's in the form of massive black holes. Well, there's all sorts of uh, problems with that idea. Uh, how do you make that many black holes? Uh, there's all sorts of astrophysical constraints limiting the possible density of such black holes. Uh, so I, I don't think that idea works, but still maybe some fraction of the dark matter might be made up out of black holes. Another possibility is that the dark matter doesn't consist of individual objects, individual particles, 
but instead is in the form of some sort of a wave through the universe and depending on how deep or how dense this wave is then you may get some dark matter and so there's people also looking for that possibility so anyway that's where we are at the moment uh, dark matter is, is a big puzzle it's uh, a puzzle that's been with us for more than uh, 80 years and uh, astrophysicists cosmologists particle physicists have been you know, studying it in great detail for at least 40 years uh, we've come up with lots of ideas for what that dark matter might be uh, the ideas range from you know, very heavy black holes all the way down through to waves of invisible particles and uh, there's all sorts of experimental efforts to uh, look to see what that dark matter might be at the moment we have no direct evidence uh, but for me that's one of the most exciting outstanding questions I'd say not just in astrophysics and cosmology but also particle physics because it suggests there's a whole world of particles out there which we don't know anything about yet. <laughs>